Good afternoon, LACA family and to all our viewers on this video. What you are about to hear in a few minutes is a blowing of shofar. What do you usually feel when you hear the siren of an ambulance? The Puba, usually we are alarmed. Why? Because we are cautioned that something is happening that needs attention. This is actually the reason why, as we begin this program, there is a blowing of shofar. It's like a siren calling our attention, our spirits, to be ready to what God has to say for us this afternoon. This is a prophetic gesture, a call on our spirits to arise, align, and receive our assignment from God our Father. Like the call for soldiers by their commander-in-chief, our Lord Jesus Christ are calling us to be at arms and prepare for His kingdom as His end-time army. If we are to win over the kingdom of darkness that is happening around us in these last days. So let us ready our hearts, let us rest, and receive revelations from the bosom of our Father like a child coming to his Father looking for answers to all his concerns. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty five to 26 I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Let us listen to this blowing of shofar and prepare our hearts. This time we would be hearing a song composed by my friend Cesar Castaneda and sung by my batchmates Koinonia Choir from Phoebus College of Bible graduates batch 95. The song would remind us of our father's love no matter where we are and what we are going through. He would always be there loving us.
Thank you very much for such wonderful song. And today we'll be going to a very short reflection about the topic, God is our Father who loves us so much. This topic is brought to us by the Father Heart Ministries, something that we've just learned 
through these past decades. The God that we know who created the universe, the almighty sovereign God, is also a father to us all. He is a, such a loving father. He is not just up there looking down over us, but he is so much concerned in every detail of our lives. God is our father who loves us so much. So I want you to receive this truth right now, this biblical truth. God is my real father who loves me so much. Can you say that in your spirit and receive that in your heart? God is my real father who loves me so much. The one and true father to us all is God our heavenly father. You know, our earthly parents are the first representations of God. But unfortunately, they could not fully represent the goodness and the faithfulness and the perfection of our God. This afternoon, God wants you to know that if there are areas of your lives where your parents missed or amissed in providing for you, like in a special occasion, you were expecting them to be there for you, but they were not there. Or like in a moment that you really need them physically, but they could not be there because of limitations. God can always be there for you. In fact, He promised, I am always with you wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be with you. God is a Father who will never leave you, who will never forsake you, who will never abandon you. He loves us so much that He gave His one and only Son. The most important of what He has, He already shared it with us. And so this afternoon, let us watch this short video reminding us of a story of a father who has been waiting for so long for a son who had left him. The title of the story is The Prodigal Son, but I want you to take note how much the father loves him. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, Father, I want my share of your estate now, before you die. So, his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. Go ahead. 
About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pots he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. <laughs> when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. He wasted everything his father gave him. While he had the job of feeding the pigs, the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Finally, he came to his senses and said, My father's workers have plenty to eat and here I am starving to death. I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. He ran to his son. hugged and kissed him. Hurry and bring the best clothes and put them on him. Give him a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Get the best calf and prepare it so we can eat and celebrate. The son of mine was dead but has now come back to life. He was lost and has now been found. And they began to celebrate. That was a beautiful story and a touching story. And every time I watch that and remember that, I am assured how much our Father God in heaven loves me. But have you personally realized how much Father God loves you? Have you thought about it? Don't you know that as soon as you wake up in the morning, He is loving you? When you have the breath, you have your five senses, and you have everything that you could enjoy in life, the food, the shelter, and all. Those are blessings without you being mindful about it many times, but those are blessings from our Heavenly Father. In the story that we just watched, we've seen how much the younger son had sinned against his father. That story is a reflection of many of us, if not all of us. We usually want to spend our lives living our own ways. And when everything is lost, we remember there is a God and a Father who will always be there for us. Many times God allows us to go through such process of brokenness just like one in this pandemic many of us have lost our jobs or many are still working from home but we know that there are areas or things lacking in our lives many of us caught the sickness many of us have gone through emotional mental or physical depression and sometimes God allows us to go to the end of ourselves that we may learn how to look up. And remember, we have a God who is up there, not only watching over us, but loving us in every way. The prodigal son thought that 
he did not deserve to be called a son anymore. So when he came back to his father with a repentant heart and humility, just wanting to be a servant, just to be accepted, just to be able to feed himself. But you know, what did the father do? How did the father show his love for his son? Immediately, he hugged him, he kissed him. In fact, when he was still far away, the Bible says the father already saw him and ran towards him. Because the reality is, many Bible scholars says, every day the father is waiting for the son to come back home. So when he was still far away, his father saw him already. And when he got on his knees and humbled himself and repented of all his sins, his father hugged him and kissed him and without a word just told his servants, give him the best robe, put the ring on his finger and gave him the sandals. You know, those three are symbols of God's love for all of us. The robe symbolizes his royalty as a son. The ring symbolizes his authority over the businesses of his father. And the sandals symbolizes his dominion over all his father's property. Such is the love of our father. He wants to bring us back to our original design. When as a son, we just enjoy him, just like in the Garden of Eden, just having fellowship with him, and all the blessings and all our needs, he promised in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. There will be no need for us to look for our needs because the Father knows them even before we ask. And surely he will provide for all of this. The same with you and me. No matter how many times we have sinned or fall short of the glory of God, no matter how grave, how dark, how deep, or how long we have sinned against God, He is such a loving Father waiting for us to come back, to repent, humble ourselves, and recognize that, Father, I have sinned against you. Forgive me. And the Father would just hug us and kiss us and assures us, how much He loves us. Because every day, He is waiting for us to return to His loving arms. All that He has is for us. All that He wants is to have fellowship with us. And let us feel how much we are loved. So let us remember this verse in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. And receive it in our hearts. How great the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Yes, I believe we are all children of God no matter what our religion is or where we come from or how we were raised. It's just that as children, many of us were astray. We were lost on our own ways. And the Father is just waiting for us to come back. But His love never fails. Even when we were astray, even when we were in our sins, His love never fails. That's why it keeps on calling us. Come back to me, my son. Come back to me, my child. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Let us all take this into our hearts. The love of the Father has been lavished upon us. Like a Niagara Falls. You know what Niagara Falls is? No? It's just so huge, so powerful. You can't imagine being under that falls. Because the love of the Father is so, so powerful, so enormous beyond what we could even ask, think, or imagine. But that love is new every morning, as soon as you wake up. 
So let us let this love sink in our hearts right now and allow the love of the Father to come. He's inviting you this afternoon. Just give Him time. You may not be able to understand everything that is happening around you and God does not require you to understand everything. All that He wants you to do is to know that you are loved and you are not alone. And you need not to be alone in this pandemic. He will always be there for you. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. Our Father, we thank you because you are love and you can't stop loving us no matter where we are, what we do, what we've done. You love us not because of what we are doing for you. You love us because of who we really are, created in your image and likeness as your children. Father, this afternoon, allow us to feel that love sink in our hearts, in our spirits. Connect us once more with your heart, with your spirit, Father, that we may come to realization that you have never left us nor abandoned us, even when we were still sinners. You have given us your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, because you love us so much. We may not be able to fully understand this, but allow us, Father, to just receive it from you right now. We open our hearts and ask you, like a low but cell phone, we are plugging our hearts to your heart. Charge us, Father. Fill us, Father, with your love. Thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. Right now, as a family, as an ecclesia, we will be having our prayer time. And this prayer time is an opportunity for us to come as one. Because the Lord has promised where two or three are gathered in His name, He is always there in our midst. And as a family, we would be praying for our family, for LACA, for our municipality, for our nation even for our destiny. So let us pause and connect our hearts again to our Father. And from the bottom of our spirits, allow His Spirit to come. As we listen to this music, let the Spirit come and minister to us. In fact, we encourage you who are watching this to message us and tell us what are your prayer concerns so we can pray for you. Maybe when you send us your prayer request in our next episode, we can pray for that for you if you want us to. So let us pray. Father, we come and we say, apart from you, we can do nothing. And through you, we live and move and have our being. Father, right now, we lift up to you our families. We know that during this pandemic, there are so many 
challenges financially physically emotionally and even mentally lord god that we have gone through father we pray that you would send your spirit and give us your shalom your wholeness and wellness restore us to our health and embrace us with your love father we pray for all who have been sick during this pandemic that you would visit them right now and touch them father heal them and raise them from their bed empower their physical body we pray father above all that they would not feel alone and that your promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us will be realized in their lives right now Father, we bless our LACA family. We bless our owners, the King's family. We bless our COO, Prof. Luis Cruz Jr. and family. We bless our school administrator, Ma'am Jess Ramos and family. We bless all our heads of departments. We bless our teachers and all our employees. Father, you have called us in this school to be a kingdom model for education. So continue to make us your vessels where your love and life and light can freely flow in us and through us to the lives of our students and their parents and families. Father, we bless our municipality of Baliwag. We bless our mayor, our vice mayor, our city, our municipal councillors, barangay officials. Father, we pray that you would also encounter them personally, even in their dreams, Father, that they would have that heart of wisdom to know what you would want them to do as public servants. We pray for the covering of your blood also in Baliwag, that there would be no more rise in the cases of COVID-19, but rather there would be healing upon healings of all our positive cases. Father, we also bless the whole province of Bulacan and Region 3. Father, make us your body, O God, the body of Christ, through the leadership of Baliwa Christian Ministers Council here in our, in our municipality, headed by Pastor Ray Cruz. Bless him, Lord God, and the church that you are using, Father, to continue to propagate the message of the gospel of the kingdom in these last days. Father, we also bless the Philippines, our nation, our beloved nation. We bless our president. Encounter him, Father, and fill him with your Father's love that he would father this nation selflessly and according to your purpose. That he would be able to lead this nation to her prophetic destiny to be a bread basket or an economic blessing to many nations, to be a missionary sending nation, to be an Israel in Asia, and to be a righteous nation, a sheep nation, Father. We claim that destiny, Father, in this jubilee year of our nation. We also bless the whole body of Christ in this nation, that you will make your body, your vessel, in spreading your love, Father, and the life that your Son, Jesus Christ, is offering to us all, and the light of your Spirit shining upon all of us. We bless also your nation, the Israel, your chosen people, whom you have promised in the last days all of them will be saved, because they will look up to him whom they have pierced on the cross and realize that indeed he is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, the Chosen and Anointed One, the Savior of the world. Father, prepare your end-time army. Prepare your children and raise us up, Father, to be your sons 
and daughters that will manifest your glory because the world is eagerly awaiting for this manifestation as you have said in your word. We thank you, Father. We love you and we thank you for the saving grace that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. May you continue to embrace us with your ever-abiding love and may the saving grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, be upon us and the shalom, the comfort, and the power of your Spirit be in us. Please we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters, and to all who have watched this video. We hope to see you next time, same time, same channel, same page. God bless us all, and Shalom, Shalom, Shalom.